How's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. I'm here at my store, The Bio Dude Houston, just playing with my uh, Borneos. I got a pretty, pretty exciting video today. Oh, there's one of my girls that I'm really excited for. Um, today, I, I am actually finally doing a, a build video for you guys. And I have in front of me an Exoterra 12, 12, 18. Now this is a pretty small floor print, to be honest. As a long-term enclosure, small, single small day geckos, um, other species of small or boreal geckos can thrive in here. I don't recommend this for a terrestrial species though whatsoever because of its height and all that good stuff. And what I'm building for are, is for a beautiful group of morning geckos. So morning geckos are a very neat little gecko. They are very fast and they are also uh, very interesting in the fact that they are parthenogenic, which means that they just go and lay, lay, lay eggs like crazy. And now let me show you. you. You put some in an enclosure and you will just get eggs upon eggs upon eggs. They love to lay in cork bark tubes. So when I build this enclosure, there's gonna be a lot of cork bark tubes. One of the popular things about this gecko is that they can actually live with other types of animals because of how small they are, how hardy they are, and quite frankly, how good they are at hiding. Uh, and you know, you can keep them with poison dart frogs. That is an extremely, uh, extremely common practice you see right now. Uh, and with these guys though, I am building this enclosure just for the morning gecko. So let's get building. So for starters, you guys know I, I, I use a drainage layer first. I am using my Hydro Grow version one. So. Now, since this is, uh, I'm not keeping dart frogs in here with them. Typically for morning geckos, they do like to have a moderately higher humidity as well as a hot spot. So to facilitate that, I usually provide them a drainage layer that is close to about one to 1.5 inches. Now, if I was keeping dart frogs with them and they were gonna be constantly living in very, very high humidity, uh, it's one of those uh, things that you might wanna consider a bulkhead, especially for an enclosure this size, because your drainage layer is gonna fill up pretty fast with how often you missed. But with our application, shouldn't be that much of a problem. So I did my Hydro Grow version one and I put down the screen divider. Now I always tell you guys, don't really need to use a screen divider for, for, for the V1 because it creates that flat, even surface, but still drains exceptionally. I do recommend it though, if you're like still new into getting it, which is why we still include it in the kits. So I got my Terra Fauna right here. Cool. You can see I used uh, about a gallon of water into the bag. And I got this nice and saturated. Now the kit you see in front of you uh, is like one of my morning gecko kits that you can get off my website. Just read the description. We change it up so that way it can scale and sell for everybody. So sometimes you, you might need some extra things. So typically for a 12 by 12 by 18, you only need about half to 70% of a six quart bag. I always tell people, I try to pack as much value into the bags as I can. So you may have a little bit left over and that goes with the Hydro Grow as well. Uh, okay, here we go. So you can see I got a good amount of everything mixed up. You can see the thick pieces of Cypress here. Uh, the, the isopods love, love, love that stuff. So as you can see here, this is about how much I, I used of the fauna and how much I used of the drainage layer. Cool. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my sphagnum moss. So this is what you're seeing in front of you. Uh, this is the, the New Zealand type, which is really nice because we haven't been able to get the New Zealand type as much as I'd like. All right, so I'm gonna dump the water in here and I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute. So I used about six quarts of substrate, so I'm gonna take my six, oof, my six quart bio shot, dump the bio shot in, boom. Okay, slightly mix that up. If you guys are unsure what, what the bio shot does, drop, drop, drop a line in the comments. Essentially, it's gonna help jumpstart uh, your 
pretty much already existing microbiological processes, but help in the aid of expediting them to help your tank establish faster. Also, since most bioactive substrates, mine, don't have any feces in them, like guano or anything like that, uh, you know, it's almost, I don't want to say inert, but you know, it helps when getting your plants established to put a little bit of extra oomph in there for them to help them get acclimated. So here we go. We got our spag and we got leaf litter. Do you guys know the sphagnum moss is gonna help generate those air pockets and will very slowly break down over time. And then the leaf litter is the same principle. It's gonna break down over time and it is also gonna help provide fuel to help drive the car with the car being your soil. Think of your biodegradables as your gas. Think of your springtails, isopods and your bio shot as your, as your engine and think of the dirt as the car. That is the best way that I can kind of describe uh, when it comes to how the layering systems work, when it comes to just your soil. You can see I got this mixed up really nicely here, really nice and aerated, lots of leaf litter here, I like it. So I do have my springtails and isopods, but I'm actually gonna do that a little bit later. I'm gonna do them after I get this, get this bad boy done. So as far as uh, for my first piece, I have an elephant skin stone right here, which I'm pretty excited for. I'm gonna actually put this kind of right here in the, in the front. Okay, next I got some cork bark. So I gotta tell you guys, morning geckos love, 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 love cork bark tubes. They love tubes. Uh, they like to lay their eggs in them. They like, to, they like to sleep in them. And quite frankly, I like giving tubes to the morning geckos because it prevents them from getting out under the lips. And I'll talk to you guys about taking care of that. What I would, wanted to do was do a cork bark background that is just loose tubes uh, for this enclosure uh, for the morning geckos. So I got some really nice pieces here. There we go. You guys, I don't know if you guys can hear in the background, but the, the, the dart frogs are going crazy right now. Okay. I'm gonna come around here, I'm gonna take a look. Okay. Take that out for right now. Next, I need a foreground plant that's gonna fill in the back nicely. I'm thinking this beautiful prayer plant right here. So I'm gonna move this forward just a little bit. Then I'm gonna go ahead and dig this. So it's really important when you put your new plants in that A, you understand that they are gonna go through a little bit of shock, okay? So you wanna make sure you water them, miss them, take good care of them. Need something a little bit back here to kind of fill this in. And here I got a really beautiful philodendron. Yeah, so I'm gonna put this guy right here. Bury him all the way down to where the drainage layer goes and then make sure that those roots are completely covered up. There we go. There we go. Okay. Next, I have a beautiful mahogany fern right here that I really, really like. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this kind of like here for right now. I'm gonna be moving that rock, mahogany fern. Okay, boom, and then the rock needs to be like right there like this. There we go, okay, without crushing the plant. So you guys know how I'm making this nice and thick and dense, while at the same time I'm making sure that they actually have a place to like bask and rest. So I do have, uh, as well as some bro bromeliads here, you notice how all these are pretty small, about the, a little bit smaller than my hand? This is the reason is I'm picking uh, bromeliads that stay really small. As, you, as when you, you know, plant them, you wanna make sure that when you plant them that they have space to grow, right? And they, that, that the, when they shoot out pups, that you have the ability to you know, make sure the pups are going where you want them to go. So, there it is. Number one, actually now it's not gonna work. There it is, number one. 
And then after the Brahms securely in place, which it is, I'm just gonna put a little bit of moss right here. Okay. Number two, got this bad boy right here. So I'm really gonna have to watch this one to make sure it doesn't get overtaken by the philodendron. So some pruning here and there. Boom. Oh, that looks really nice. I like that a lot. And then we got this small bad boy right here. And I think I'm gonna put this right in there. There we go. Where's that hole right here? Okay. Boom. Okay. And then I'm gonna take, so sometimes at the front you might need a little bit of floral wire, but I should be able just to tuck this in just enough. Okay. As far as a water dish is concerned, there's a couple options you can go. Uh, we do have the small exoterra water dish here, and then I do have a monkey pod. I'm electing to use a monkey pod that I'm actually gonna put right here in the front, right in the middle. My hope is that that monkey pod holds enough water. Okay, so I, I, it's time that I add in my cleanup crew. Check it out. So we got springtails in here. You can see them on the charcoal. One of these days I'm gonna have another video on the charcoal method and the, you know, and of course the clay method and the soil method. Break down all the different types for you so that way you know which is gonna be best for your application at home. So I'm just gonna spread out some of this charcoal here and I'm gonna kinda just mix it in a little bit. And then we have the isopods. Okay, these are powder whites. So the morning geckos are gonna eat these guys too. So it's definitely uh, recommended to be using, you know, you can use these guys, which can breed aggressively in a small enclosure like this. Alternatively, you can use dwarf white isopods uh, as, as well as dwarf purple isopods. If, but if you want an isopod that you can actually see and, you know, uh, you know see th thriving in your enclosure, these guys are a really good option. So I'm gonna put them in there in just a second. So here we go. I'm gonna put this back in place here. We got a couple nut pods that I'm gonna scatter around here. Now nut pods are great, much like your, your leaf litter. They provide microbial hotspots in your enclosure, which does help you and your plants have the essential fungal and bacterial functions going. All right. All right, and last but not least, I got a little bit of live moss here. One. Now this stuff is dried, so we're gonna give it a little bit of love here as it gets established. Here we go. In, out. Perfect. Okay. So let's go over this really quick before I get into the other stuff. We have my hydro grow drainage layer about a one inch depth, then we have a screen divider protecting it. Alternatively, you can use clay balls, small rocks, really anything, as long as you're able to differentiate your substrate from your drainage layer. Then we have my terra fauna, thoroughly mixed with Bioshot, leaf litter, sphagnum moss, as well as uh, fortified with springtails and isopods. We have uh, some, some pillow moss here, elephant stone right here, and I used cork bark tubes in the back. A philodendron, a prayer plant, which is overshadowed by the philodendron right now, I understand. But don't worry, it'll definitely outgrow, or it'll get growed and fill in this area pretty quick. And then three different bromeliads here, which I think will just look really, really nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give this a, a good mist down. So a lot of you guys ask, are you gonna use a background or why didn't you use the background? I don't really like using backgrounds with tiny, tiny, tiny geckos that can get out of literally anything. And I'm gonna show you guys some of the problem areas and a lot of enclosures with morning geckos that you have to be really 
cognizant of so that way you can, you know, take care of them appropriately and not let them get out. All right, no gaps, no openings in the front. We wanna watch corners too when we're opening and closing because they have a habit of getting their little feet and tails into the tiny little holes that are the corner of the cages. Okay, so these need to be closed. Alternatively, you can silicone this and this shut. You cannot have any type of gap or opening. They cannot get out of the screen. Okay, so I got the lid on. And as you can see here, it is being powered by my six inch grow and glow LED. Comes with a one year warranty. You can kind of see what this looks like here. Or if you move it towards the back to kind of go towards the front. Lots of different options for you as far as how you would like the, how you would like the light to function. But for my intended purposes, put it right like this. Boom. So I think the tank looks absolutely beautiful. I'm really excited about it. So now I'm gonna to talk to you guys about what my husbandry loadout is gonna look like. So for starters, I do provide UVB to morning geckos. Now, if they are in an enclosure with dart frogs, probably I would not do that. So it's one of those things that if they're being kept with any other animal, with how hardy they are, they are able to acclimate fairly easily. But if they are the only animal that you're keeping them, or if this is just for morning geckos, definitely, uh, definitely check out uh, your the, the UVB and heat. So we do have this 12 inch solar grow. This is a T5 fixture. And then we like using the Arcadia Shade Dwellers. This is the 2.4%. So obviously this is a very, very low Ferguson zone. This is meant for like crested geckos, gargoyle geckos, which again is amazing for utilizing of these guys. So essentially what we'll do is we'll have our glow and grow here uh, onto, the, onto the front. And then I'll have my, uh, sorry, I'll have my shade dweller right about right here. Okay, now there's two different options here as far as heating is concerned. You really don't need to give these guys a large hotspot, but if you are in an area where it stays pretty cold or you notice that they really react well to it, then, then I do recommend providing one. So you notice how I have this piece of cork right here kind of out and open. That is what I envisioned their basking spot to be. So I am gonna move the glow and grow to the back, apologies. I have the, the solar grow right here, which is gonna take up out to about here. And then I use a nano fixture, which is about this big, which will sit right here in the front in the middle. For the heat, we are using a 25 watt, uh, they're a little 25 watt uh, incandescent bulb. They're priced pretty well, and quite frankly, they work great. So we have the nano with the bulb. So we have heating, to keep them warm, to maintain basic homeostasis. I like to give them a hot spot of around uh, 82, 84. Uh, but that, that's what we do with the dude. And then we provide them a shade dweller UVB and then the glow and grow bulb. As far as feeding them, we do utilize the lizard ledge right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna put that on. This is another product that I am really happy to have. All right. Boom. Now, and what's nice is just like any other magnet, magnetized thing, you can literally put it wherever you want. Boom. So in here is where we would put some of the Pangea. They love the Pangea red uh, or the, or the uh, Cresta Gecko food but we, they are omnivores, so it is recommended to give them small insects as well when they're babies like this. Here's a little baby. These guys, they'll eat the Pangea and then they also eat Hydei fruit flies. And for the Hydei fruit flies, they are always dusted with Rapashi Calcium Plus. And when we get to uh, sub-adults, these guys are fed pinhead crickets to small eighth inch crickets, no bigger than the space in between their eyes, as well as the, the <clears throat> excuse me, the Rapashi or the Pangea gecko food. And then of course we got Big Boy here who can take easily quarter inch crickets with all the Pangea food. Then we gut load if they're not being fed fruit flies, if they are being fed crickets or soft bodied roaches. We gut load them with bug rub. 
Gut loading is super, super important, guys. Very diet, healthy bugs, healthy animals, all goes in a big circle. Now, these guys do have the, the lamella on their feet, so unlike leopard geckos, they can stick to their surfaces, which is pretty cool. I've always, enjoy, always enjoyed that. So as far as keeping track of your parameters, we do recommend a couple things. Look, some people really like to go all out with their enclosures and there's nothing wrong with that. The Zoom and Environmental Control Center is pretty cool. Uh, I really dig it. It, it. It's a timer for your light. It helps regulate your hue humidity if it's, if it's hooked up to a misting system. And it, can, and it also has a built-in thermostat. So it literally helps keep all of your parameters in check. To help maintain those parameters and to check them, we always use a misting bottle and I use a thermometer hygrometer that has a probe that you can move around which again is really important to be able to look at what your hot spot is and what your cool side is because you want to make sure that they have a place to escape that's nice and cool. And within this enclosure, I fully expect to get a good amount of eggs. Here we are. Pretty cool. So I think that pretty much covers everything for how to set up your BioDude Morning Gecko or if you're not using my products, gives you a good guideline of what you should be doing. If you have any questions, concerns, or anything else that I should have added, drop it in the comment section, guys. I really appreciate everybody's support. My name is Josh Halter. I am the owner and founder of The BioDude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. You can come to my store here in Houston, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. I really appreciate everyone's support. The dude abides.